Welcome to an enlightening podcast from IslamPodcasts.com. We encourage our listeners to please comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please remind your family and friends to also visit IslamPodcasts.com for engaging discussions on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, Sira, and much more. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasulahi al-kareem. Amma ba'd. Inshallah in today's talk, uh, we will talk about uh, the journey of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, <clears throat> as we discussed last week uh, about the farewell uh, sermon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, the the Hajj of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi in which he he gave uh, a couple of uh, khutbahs. We just talked about that last week. And uh, after uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi came back from uh, from the Hajj, uh, there are uh, symptoms that can be okay, the were shown by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from by his uh, by his health and as as well as the indicators of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave about uh, uh, about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam being passing away from this dunya in the, uh, the, the some of the signs were uh, like in the 10th year of the uh, the hijra which was before the hajj actually uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam spent uh, 20 days uh, of uh, i'tikaf instead of 10 in general Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to spend about 10 days in i'tikaf while in the last year of his life, he spent 20, years, 20 days. Uh, so instead of 10 days, he spent 20 days uh, of atikaf in, uh, in the last year of the Hijrah. And, uh, uh, and Jibreel, he, uh, he reviewed the Quran with Rasulullah twice as well this year. And uh, in his last, uh, uh, the last Hajj, Hajjatul Wada, Rasulullah وسلم, uh, in a couple of uh, times he gave the indications like when he said, I do not know whether I will ever meet you at this place once again after this current year. That was kind of a sign that uh, there was the last time Rasulullah wasallam was at the Hajj with the Sahaba. And also while he was teaching them the manasik uh, of the Hajj, he said, لِتَأْخُذُوا مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَإِنِّي لَا أَدْرِي لَعَلِّي لَا أَحُجُّ بَعْدَ حَجَّةِ هَذِي uh, which means that uh, Rasulullah sallam was saying to the Sahaba, learn your rituals of the manasik by seeing me performing them, for I do not know whether I would be performing the hajj after this hajj of mine. This hadith is recorded by uh, Sahih Muslim. And similarly, uh, in the 11th year of uh, the hijrah, which was uh, the, the year Rasulullah sallam passed away, uh, he, when he was talking about the fasting of the Ashura, uh, he said, "La in baqitu li ila qabil li asumanna tasa," which means Rasulullah Sallam said, "If I live till the next year, I would definitely observe fast on the ninth. And the other rivaya by Abu Bakr Siddiq radiAllahu an, he mentioned that uh, when he was talking about the uh, tasa, which is the ninth, he was referring to Ashura because uh, the the fast of the Ashura is on the tenth of the Muharram. So. Uh, this was uh, uh, one more sign that Rasulullah Sallallahu was showing that, that that may be his last year. And then uh, the revelation of Surah Al-Nasr, where Allah Azza wa Jal uh, asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to, 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 to do that, uh, ask for istighfar and do the tawbah. So uh, that, that's another way of telling Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that that was, uh, his, his death is approaching. And... Uh, in on the on the early days of the Safar, uh, the month of Safar, in the in the eleventh year of the Hijra, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to uh, went to went to the Uhud, the mountain of Uhud, and uh, he made the du'a for the martyrs of the Shuhada of the of the Uhud. And the way he was making the du'a uh, for the Shuhada and also the people who were living. It uh, sounded as uh, there was also kind of an indicator towards Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, passing away of the dunya. Uh, uh, the the du'a Rasulullah Sallallahu was making the meaning of that was like this: I am to pre- I am to pre- precede you, uh, and I have been made witness upon you by Allah 
you will meet me at the fountain, which is uh, the Haud, uh, Haud Kawthar, very soon. Uh, I have been given the keys of the worldly treasures by Allah. I do not fear for you that you will turn mushrik, uh, uh, mushrikeen after me. But I do fear the acquisition of worldly riches uh, should entice you to strike one another's neck. And uh, subhanAllah, you, know, you can see that today uh, uh, is not the main issue of the ummah that uh, the people are uh, getting into the shirk. Rather, people worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Of course, there are different forms of shirk, shirks are out, out, out there, but uh, it's not that they are doing the shirk in the sense of uh, worshiping the uh, the statues, statues or the false gods that directly. Uh, in a different way, they are probably perform, performing the shirk. But uh, uh, when it comes to the main issue of the ummah today, we see is there are uh, fights among the ummah. There are uh, there's a bloodshed happening. Within the Ummah, there are many Muslim countries which are fighting against each other. And instead of being uh, part of one Ummah under one leadership, we've been divided into multiple statelets and uh, they have no power in reality because of being uh, divided like that. Then Rasulullah, uh, another sign of that was Rasulullah uh, uh, one night went to Al-Baqi, uh, the cemetery of uh, Al-Baqi, and uh, he... I implore to Allah to forgive the shuhada of Islam and he said uh, uh, basically he sent the salam to the uh, dwellers of the grave uh, like whenever you enter into any cemetery you say, you say assalamu alaikum ya ahl diyar min, uh, min al-muslimin wal mu'mineen uh, uh, he may, uh, and then may that morning that dawns upon you be more relieving than that which dawn upon the living afflictions are approaching them like cloudy lumps of a dark night the last of which follows the, the first, the last one is bearing more evil than the first. He, he comforted them saying, we will follow you. Meaning, uh, all of us of course are going to eventually going to die. But Rasulullah saying that like this was more of a sign of Rasulullah passing away from the dunya. Then when Rasulullah came back from uh, uh, the cemetery of the Baqi, uh, on the, uh, that was the 29th of the Safar. Of the 11th year of the hijrah he uh, he he fell sick and uh, he had some headache he had some uh, fever and uh, uh, this uh, uh, when not normally when you have fever you put some sort of a uh, uh, wet cloth on your forehead and uh, when they were doing that kind of a headband on the solar uh, forehead you could see the, the impact of the fever uh, on the head, headband as well and uh, Rasulullah so continued to lead the Sahaba in the Salahs for the next 11 days while he was sick. And uh, uh, the, the number of days Rasulullah so was sick was uh, either 13 or 14 days. There is a ikhtilaf about this issue, but uh, uh, around a two weeks period of time. Uh, the last week while Rasulullah so the sickness was going uh, uh, severe, he, he was uh, continuously asking the, his wives, where shall I stay tomorrow? And the way Rasulullah was asking uh, uh, the Umhatul Mu'mineen, they understood that what he wanted, so they allowed him to stay wherever he wished. So Rasulullah moved to Aisha's uh, room uh, while he was walking at, at that time, and uh, um, and his he had the head he was head banded as he was uh, dragging his feet till he came to. Uh, to her uh, to her room and uh, uh, al fadl bin uh, abbas and ali uh, they uh, they were they were walking along with him uh, while rasulullah sallam was sick and he was with aisha radiyallahu anha aisha radiyallahu anha she used to recite uh, muawidat which is the, which are the two last chapters of uh, of the quran surah al falaq and surah al nas uh, uh, on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as Rasulullah sallam taught that to her, uh, and uh, about five days prior to that, uh, which was the Wednesday, because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi passed away on Monday, uh, uh, his temperature w w uh, went up very high, and uh, uh, he he fainted, and uh, he was going through quite a bit of pain, and he asked the Sahaba to pour some uh, water on him, so they did that, and they, he he was seated. And they were uh, helping him to pour some water on him. Uh, and then Rasulullah when he stopped him, 
uh, th then he felt quite uh, quite better and he entered into the masjid um, uh, and uh, he he had still had the uh, headband uh, on his on his forehead and uh, he sat on the uh, member over there and he addressed the sahaba over there and uh, he reminded the sahaba saying la'antullahi ala al-yahud wal nasara takhazu qubura anbiya'ihim masajida rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said that the curse of allah falls on the yahud and nasara for they have made their uh, prophets graves as the places of worship and and another riwayah he said that uh, do not make my grave a worshipped uh, idol uh, the place to be worshipped and then he uh, offered himself and invited the people to repay any kind of a injury he might have inflicted on any of them meaning he was asking the uh, sahaba if he harmed them in any way it's, it's time to come and uh, 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 get the repayment for that and uh, one of the sahabi he came and uh, he mentioned that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he owed him um, uh, i believe about three dirham and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he asked uh, fadl to pay for uh, pay, pay him the money and he uh, that's one thing and also uh, he uh, he when offered uh, he, he said he whom i have ever lashed his back i offer him my back so that he may avenge himself on me he whom i have ever blasphemed his honor here i am offering my honor to, so that he may avenge himself so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam want to make want to make sure with the sahaba that if there is in any way that he has harmed uh, anybody rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was there to uh, to recompense and uh, rasulullah sallallahu also gave uh, very clear advice about the uh, al ansar he said i admonish you to be good to al ansar they are my family and with them i found shelter they have acquitted themselves credibly of the responsibility that fell upon them and now there remains what you have to do you should fully acknowledge and appreciate the favor that they have shown and should overlook their faults uh, and another uh, version uh, that talks about when the sallallahu alaihi gave this uh, khutbah it says the number of believers uh, would increase but the number of helpers would decrease We're talking about ansar uh, to the extent that they would be among men as salt in the food so he who from among you occupies a position of responsibility and is powerful enough to do harm or good to the people he should fully acknowledge and appreciate the favor and said allah uh, uh, allahu akbar and has, uh, allah the great has given a slave of his the opportunity to make make the choice between whatever he desires of allah's pro provisions in this world and what he keeps from him in the world but he has opted the later now here when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was talking about the slave that he was given a, a choice to have the provision in this dunya uh, uh, or to uh, opt out uh, which is uh, desires of allah's provision in this world and what he keeps for him in the world so uh, when so Allah was saying these words uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu he cried and he said we sacrifice our fathers and mothers for you uh, for your sake uh, and uh, 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 Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu said that we were wondering why Abu Bakr said such a thing and people said look at that old man to, to referring to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu so Allah is talking about a slave who was granted the right between the best fortunes of the world and the bounty of Allah in the hereafter but he said we sacrifice our fathers and mothers for your sake it was later on that we realized what he had aimed at the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the slave in form to choice and that uh, abu said al khudri said that we also acknowledge that abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu an was the most learned learned amongst us and that's that's the sign of intelligence of Abu Bakr Siddiq and his company with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he he understood well what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was hinting and right away the very first person he responded back like this uh, uh, that my, uh, my uh, fathers and mothers uh, for for your sake and uh, uh, this is the foresightedness of Abu Bakr Siddiq that can be seen not only at this point but when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away and after abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu he took the charge uh, after rasulullah sallallahu alaihi passed away from the dunya then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, the, uh, the fellow i feel uh, the talking about that i feel more secure in the company of abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu if i were the, to make friendship with my 
uh, with any other one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would have made Abu Bakr Siddiq as, as a friend of mine. For him, I feel affection and brotherhood of Islam. No gate shall be, uh, shall be closed, shall be, uh, shall be kept open uh, in the mosque except that of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu That's the, uh, the greatness of Abu Bakr Siddiq uh, radiallahu an. Uh, that can be seen even at the uh, life the Rasulullah's life was ending, and uh, Rasulullah also mentioned about Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu that he had paid off everybody's uh, uh, debts except Abu Bakr Siddiq in the sense of uh, how, how many favors Abu Bakr uh, did to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So uh, four days prior to uh, uh, the death of Rasulullah sallallahu which was the Thursday. Uh, before Salaam passed away, he said to the people um, while he was suffering uh, from severe pain, "Come here, I will cause you. Uh, I, I will cause you to write something so that you will never fall in error." Now he was going through a lot of uh, uh, pain and uh, uh, and sickness was uh, 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 illness was getting severe and severe. Upon this, Abu Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an said, "Rasulullah suffering from uh, uh, from pain." And you have the Quran with you. That's sufficient for you, um, because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did not know uh, he was uh, did not know how to write. And upon that, uh, Umar bin Khattab was saying that Rasulullah sallam is saying these words. Uh, the, uh, don't worry about that. You have Quran that is sufficient for you. And others, however, wanted to the writing to be made. Whatever Rasulullah sallam want to write or uh, or want, want somebody else to write. When Rasulullah sallam heard about them uh, arguing about the subject. Uh, he ordered them to go away and leave him, uh, leave him alone. Uh, that day, he uh, recommended three things, uh, as reported by, uh, by by the hadith. One was he said the Yahud and Nasara and the Mushrikeen should be expelled from Jaziratul Arab. So that that's a command about specific to Jaziratul Arab that the, uh, there's no other deen is allowed except Islam over there. And second, he recommended that delegations should be honored and entertained in a way similar to the one he used to do. The third one, the, the, the reporter, the reporter he for, forgotten. And uh, it is mentioned that it could have been about uh, adherence to the Quran Sunnah, or it was likely about, uh, about the Usama bin Zayd of the Allah uh, army, that uh, that goal should be achieved, that he should be sent to lead the army that we talked about uh, uh, the Farwa radiallahu anhu who was killed by the uh, Byzantines uh, and uh, to take the revenge of the, the blood of the Muslim that was shed by the Byzantines. And also the, the very same people uh, that they, they fought uh, his own father Zaid bin Haritha uh, in, the, in the battle of Mota where he, he was martyred. Okay, uh, it could have been uh, or it could have been about the Salah and uh, being attentive to uh, the right hand possession. In spite of uh, uh, the, 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 the disease and the pain that Rasulullah Sallallahu was going going through, he continued to lead the Salah until the uh, Salatul Maghrib of the, thir- the Thursday, which is four days before the salah, uh, before he passed away. And uh, the last Salah that he, he led uh, uh, among the Sahaba while he was uh, still sick, was Salat al-Maghrib of Thursday, and he recited the Wal Mursalat al Arfa and uh, by the wind, uh, or the angels of the Messenger of Allah sent forth one after another. This is the surah that he was reciting. The uh, Sahaba reported that as well. And uh, in the evening of Thursday, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's sickness uh, or the illness continued to grow, and he he got uh, his health got uh, worse and worse, and uh, even. Uh, Rasulullah Sallam was at that time. He was, he came. Uh, he he asked Aisha radiallahu anha if the people have prayed, uh, performed their salah, which was salat Aisha, because Rasulullah Sallam prayed Maghrib, but he did not pray Aisha yet. And she said no. And uh, they, uh, so Rasulullah Sallam, she she mentioned that they are waiting for you. So he asked to pour some water on him, water on him. So uh, he uh, we, we we did as Aisha mentioned. Uh, as he ordered, so he washed and wanted to stand up, but he fainted. When he came uh, came around, uh, uh, came back and he asked again if they prayed, and they said no. They are still waiting for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then the same sequence uh, of things happened, and the third time the same thing happened. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he commanded that Abu Bakr to uh, lead the salah, 
And uh, three or four times, actually Aisha radiallahu anha, she was trying to make excuses for Abu Bakr to lead the salah. One of the excuses that was mentioned in the riwayat was Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he recites Quran, he, he cries. Uh, so you should get somebody else. Was, uh, Abu Bakr is, uh, is soft, so ask somebody else to lead the salah. And upon which Rasulullah so sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you women are like the women who try to entice Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam into immorality. Convey my request to Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. That does not mean that Aisha was compared in that sense of the kind of a thing that women of uh, uh, of Yusuf the, in the time that uh, those women tried to do with the Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. It was more of a Rasulullah so was pointing to Aisha that what she was saying uh, was more towards uh, uh, thinking of it could be uh, difficult for Abu, Abu Bakr to take the leadership in the sense of the, maybe people w- w- would not like it. And uh, so what she was trying to say was more to protect uh, her father, Abu Bakr. And uh, uh, a day or two prior to the, uh, the, the, the death, uh, which is the riwayat mentioned that it was either Saturday or Sunday. Uh, uh, so he was, he, he, f- 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 he got a little better. So he went out leaning on uh, uh, on two men to perform the uh, the Dhuhr prayer. And Abu Bakr was uh, about to lead the prayer and he pu- pu- he, he wanted to come uh, move, move away. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi made him uh, stay there and he sat next to him. So Rasulullah Sallallahu was sitting next to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an on the left side of Abu Bakr, meaning Abu Bakr was on the right. So Rasulullah Sallallahu was leading the prayer actually. But Abu Bakr is the one who was raising whenever Rasulullah Sallallahu was saying Allahu Akbar. He was raising the voice of Allahu Akbar. So Abu Bakr was following Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and Sahaba were following Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an in this salah. And uh, uh, the day, uh, so this is one of the times where Rasulullah Sallallahu health got a little bit better. Uh, then a day before his death, uh, on the Sunday, Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, freed all the slaves that he had, whatever wealth he had, which was uh, which was about seven dinar. Uh, sorry, whatever wealth he had, he uh, wealth he got by freeing the, uh, whatever wealth he had, he paid off whatever debts he had over the people, and uh, he uh, he charitied seven dinar uh, he owned and gave his weapons as a present to the Muslims, as a gift for the Muslims, and. Uh, on the Sunday night, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, she, uh, she borrowed the oil from the neighbors to, to light the room. And uh, even Rasulullah's armor at that time was, uh, was uh, left as a rahan, as a, as a mortgage, as a security deposit with the Yahudi from, uh, because it was t- about 30 sa'a uh, of the barley was taken from him. Uh, so that was uh, uh, the time when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi passed away, the best of the creation uh, on the face of the earth. And he was, at, even at that time, he was the ruler of the whole Jaziratul Arab. And uh, as a leader, that's all he had. So he ba- really ha- ba- barely ha- had anything. And so we can tell that his ruling, uh, the purpose of his ruling over the people has nothing to do with... Uh, the, the the benefit of this dunya or any kind of a material gain that he was after unlike today's any you t- pick any country any ruler uh, unfortunately non-muslim and muslim even uh, and we find that all of them are after uh, all sorts of benefits of this dunya well rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam showed from his life the only purpose that he was ruling over the people because that's a command of Allah Azza wa Jal for him and the generations coming after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why we find the, the, the best of the generation, the Sahaba, uh, uh, the, the after, after Rasulullah Sallallahu passed away, they followed the same example and, uh, uh, and Islam spread across the known world within a very short period of time. Uh, and they were not after the riches of the world rather the main purpose of spreading the Islam was to take the people out of worshipping the slaves of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and bring them back to worship the creator of the, the, the whole universe which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's the main purpose of that was and we can see that by even the belongings that he had 
after when Rasulullah uh, passed away. And, and it's not that the Muslims did not have wealth or something at that time. The, the people had a lot of wealth, especially after the Fatah Makkah. Uh, we can see that uh, the riches were started coming uh, to, 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 towards the Muslims and uh, Islam was spreading and in every sense from the perspective of the numbers were increasing and, and also the, the life was getting better and the, the riches started coming at that time already. And so uh, the, going back to the last day of Rasulullah when he was uh, alive, uh, there's a hadith the reported by Anas bin Malik says, while the Muslims were performing the Fajr prayer on the Monday morning, and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an was the one who was leading the Salah, and uh, uh, they were surprised to see Rasulullah sallam raising the curtain uh, of Aisha's room, uh, the Hujr of Aisha, and uh, he looked at them while they were praying. Uh, uh, aligned properly and he was uh, very cheerful, his face was very cheerful, he was smiling uh, and uh, seeing him, Abu Bakr Siddiq, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq an, he tried to pull himself out of the line again and give way to him to lead the Salah for because he thought that Rasulullah wasallam wanted to go out and pray and Anas uh, said the Muslims were praying, uh, were so delighted that they were almost to uh, uh, break, to break their prayer so Rasulullah SAW can come and join us. So Allah SAW from his hand gesture uh, asked them to continue the salah and he went back into uh, the room of Aisha radiallahu anha. And uh, that was the last prayer uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he lived for uh, because uh, Rasulullah SAW passed away uh, before the Duhur time. When it was uh, daytime Rasulullah SAW asked uh, Fatima radiallahu anha, the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, who was the only child of Rasulullah was alive at that time and told her something in privacy. And when she heard what Rasulullah said, she started crying. Uh, then he said some, whispered something again in her ear and she started laughing. Aisha, radiallahu anha, she asked afterwards about that, what uh, uh, Rasulullah said, Fatima's reply was the first time he, he disclosed to her about uh, that uh, he will not recover from this illness and she started crying. Then he told to, uh, told Fatima that uh, Fatima would be the first of his family to join him, so she smiled. And he also told Aisha radiallahu anha that, oh, sorry, Fatima radiallahu anha that uh, she is the Sayyidat Nisa, meaning the, the the lady of all the women of the world. And uh, Fatima, Fatima radiallahu anha, she witnessed how her father was going through the pain and um, she said what great pain my father is in uh, and when Rasulullah Sallam heard these words he said he, uh, he t- t- talked about himself that he will not suffer any more pain uh, uh, after today uh, when today is over and then he asked uh, Al-Hassan and Hussein uh, to be brought to him he kissed them and recommended that they would be looked after uh, and he, then he asked his, uh, to, to see his wives, they came and he preached them and, to, uh, and told them to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. And that uh, the day pain grew more severe and, uh, uh, he, and he said that he can see, feel the pain that was, uh, feel the pain of the, uh, of the food that was served to him by one of the Yahudiya uh, women who tried to poison Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so she, he uh, in, in Khaybar, and he said that he could, he could t- taste that. Uh, so, so some of the scholars even uh, go to the even to that extent, and they say that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually passed away because of the the, the same poison uh, that um, the, 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 the Yahudiya she tried to give to Rasulullah tried to give to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, uh, when uh, the pain was uh, increasing, and Aisha, radiallahu an, anha, she was uh, he, he was leaning to to Aisha, radiallahu anha. So he was uh, he 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 was looking at uh, the siwak, uh, which is a uh, which is like a stick that you use to uh, to brush your teeth. And uh, when he was looking at uh, the uh, the stick, uh, Aisha, radiallahu anha, uh, asked if he. He wanted to brush his uh, teeth, or he wants to use the siwak. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said an affirmation that yes. And then uh, she she gave uh, the siwak to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it, she softened uh, the, the the siwak with uh, with her own teeth. Uh, and the hadith mentions that uh, uh, that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brushed uh, brushed his teeth, and he was 
uh, he was remembering Allah Azza wa Jal he, uh, after he brushed his teeth as much as he could have. And uh, he was remembering Allah Azza wa Jal and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for his rahmah. And uh, one of the things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was uh, repeating over and over and that was his uh, last words as reported by Aisha radiallahu anha because uh, uh, he was leaning to Aisha and when, she, when he passed away his last words were Allahumma rafiqul ala which means that uh, Allah is the uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, the, the highest uh, uh, friend and uh, now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he uh, took the last breath at that time between the, the Fajr and the Dhuhr prayer. Um, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu was about 63 years old. To think to re- uh, remember it, Rasulullah Sallallahu was the best of the creation uh, uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la created and is the best among the human beings. Uh, even him, he had to pass through, go through, uh, go through the death, which is as Allah Azza Jal says, كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزها عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور that uh, everyone shall taste death so even the best of the creation Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم had to go through that and uh, uh, Allah سبحانه وتعالى says وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة and only on the day of resurrection Shall you be paid your your wages in full? فَمَنْ زُحْزِ عَنِ النَّارِ And whosoever who has removed himself away from the fire وَدْخِلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاسْ And enter into Jannah, he is successful for sure. وَمَا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعَ الْغُرُوَ And the life of this dunya is only enjoyment and deception, uh, a deceiving thing. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, uh, the, the reaction of the Sahaba was uh, uh, it it varied uh, when we talk about Anas bin Malik radiallahu and he mentions about the day uh, as he said that I have never witnessed a day better or brighter than that on which Rasulullah came to us meaning come, came to Medina and he said and I have never witnessed a more awful or darker day than that on which Rasulullah passed away and uh, um, when, Fat- when Rasulullah Sallam passed away, Fatima said, O oh Father, whom his Lord responded to his supplication, O oh Father, whose abode is paradise, O oh Father, whom I announced his death to Jibreel. Umar al Khattab an, at that time, his response was uh, very severe actually. He was stunned and uh, he almost lost his consciousness. And he stood before the people and he started saying, Some of the munafiqeen, they claim that Rasulullah Sallam passed, uh, he died. And uh, he said the Messenger of Allah did not die, but went to, his, uh, his, uh, to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in the same way as Musa bin Imran did. He stayed away for 40 nights, but uh, finally came back, though they said he had been uh, dead. By Allah, Rasulullah Sallam will come back, and he will cut off the hands and the legs of those who claim his death. And in the reports talk about that, Umar Khattab said, whoever says, that Rasulullah died, he will chop off his head. And uh, one report about Uthman talks about that he became silent. He was not talking to anybody. And uh, about Ali, it says that he went to the house of Fatima and he uh, uh, he just kept himself over there. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, actually he was uh, away from the house of Rasulullah when this uh, uh, passed away. So when he came back to the, uh, came back when he found out about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, he dismounted from his, uh, from his mount and uh, he talked uh, to nobody. He went directly uh, to, the, uh, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he passed away and uh, he saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was covered in his uh, Yemeni mantle. Uh, he uncovered his face and he, uh, he, he kissed him and cried. Then he said that I sacrificed my father and mother for your sake. Uh, Allah verily will not cause you to die twice. You have just experienced the death that Allah had ordained. Then he went out and Umar, he heard, saw him talking. He said to Umar to be seated. Umar refused to do that. People moved away from Umar now when they saw Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh. 
and he said and now he who worship Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Muhammad is dead now but who worship Allah worships Allah he is ever living and he he never dies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa ma Muhammadun illa rasul qad khalat min qablihi ar-rusul fa in mata aw qutila an qalabtum ala aqrabikum wa man yanqalib ala aqibayhi falan falan yadurru Allah shay'a fa sayajzi Allah ash-shakirin Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not more than a messenger and indeed many messengers have passed away before him if he dies or is killed when you uh, will you then turn back on your heels as believers and he who turns back on his heels not the least harm will do, he he do to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah give you reward to those who are grateful this is an ayah that was this is from surah al imran uh, this ayah was revealed actually uh, uh, in the time of ghazwatul ahad and in this ghazwa there was a rumor about rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam have been killed and allah azza wa jalla reminded the muslimin about this that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will die uh, uh, he uh, like um, all the messengers before in the past also ibn abbas says that abu bakr siddiq when he recited this ayah it sounded as, as if people had never heard search this ayah till abu bakr recited uh, as a reminder it's not that they did not know the ayah they knew the ayah but it struck them that this is the reality now the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that that really gave them the affirmation about the news that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away and uh, uh, ibn al-musayyib says about umar al-khattab uh, he said that umar al-khattab said by allah as soon as i heard abu bakr say, uh, say it the this ayah he said i fell down to the ground i felt as if my legs had been unable to carry me so i collapsed when i heard him say only then i did realize that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam really died inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun and uh, uh, so inshallah we'll stop here for today's talk uh, uh, tomorrow uh, in next week's talk we will cover the the burial of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, and the situation the uh, a vacuum that was created after rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, passed away how the sahaba gathered in uh, in saqifa uh, uh, bani sa'ida and uh, they elected uh, abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu an as the as the khalifa to rasul after rasul passed away and, uh, and that's an important event uh, that led to abu bakr to take the leadership uh, for us to understand so we can understand how uh, the leadership uh, or the amir al-mu'minin uh, is supposed to be elected to rule over the muslimin by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and especially because of today's reality that we are in and everybody just talks about uh, uh, participation in the voting system that's going on and the uh, people try to compare that with the election system in Islam so inshallah next week will be the last uh, session for the seer session we started about a year ago uh and uh, we'll talk about uh, the burial of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the uh, election process of abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu so we'll stop here inshallah if there is any question or comment about the subject that's covered today inshallah I'll try to answer thank you for listening to this podcast podcasts on current events islamic guidance quran tafsir and sira are available at islampodcasts.com as well as on iTunes rate review and comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community please subscribe share and tell a friend about islampodcast.com